Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. And of course, we are rejoicing and glad in it, praise God. Not being moved by what we see, by what we feel, or what we, uh, how we think in the natural realm, but we only believe what the Word of God says. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible declares you are who God says you are. You have what God says you have, and you can do what God says you can do, whether you are presently expressing it or not, praise God. Why? Because God is in control of your life, and he's in control of your life, especially as you learn how to use your faith, praise God. So welcome, welcome, welcome to another great day of victory in the Lord Jesus Christ, which we have. Sometimes you don't feel like it, sometimes it don't look like it, but you have the victory because of what Jesus Christ accomplished 2,000 years ago in Jesus' name. Well, it's been a good day. I want to welcome all of you to our broadcast today, praise God. Uh, you know, we got some great things in store for you today and all week long, praise God. And, you know, for many of you that uh, I would like to, uh, I'm, 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 you know, just a quick announcement. I'm, I'm doing what I call a refresher of, uh, of faith, you know, a beginning this week. You know, uh, meaning this is that I have, a, I have over 10,000 students around the world, <laughs> amen, that, uh, that has been a blessing that, I, that God has enabled me to be a blessing to through our ministry and institute. And God put in my heart to do what I call an MTI refresher. Number one, for those that have never attended my MTI program, ministry school program, and those also for those that have attended and it's been years and you just need a refreshing. So we're going to be doing some, what I call refreshing, amen, your faith, refreshing, you know, going back over some classes, praise God, and, and refreshing them for 2022, praise God, what you're dealing with right now. It's going to be a great blessing. If you're interested in being a part of that, all you have to do is just uh, message me. Do messenger and, and let me know, Dr. Craig, I want to be a part of the class, whether you're a present student or a past student, or you want to just become a part of this class. Uh, it's, 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 I don't use the word free, but I say this is my gift to you on, on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, uh, and, and Jesus paid for 2,000 years ago. But if you're interested in that, you all do is uh, message me, send me an email address, and I'll make you a part of the class. We're going to begin this coming Tuesday, so you really want to... You know, get right on that immediately in Jesus' name. All right, praise God. Today's lesson is called, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, releasing your faith for the hundredfold blessing. Now, uh, I've heard so many times about the hundredfold blessing, but nobody never really talked to me that much about it. You know, I just heard about it and things like that. But all last week, I, I was talking about the hundredfold blessing. And I'm going to end, it's going to, today's going to be the end of it. I'm going to talk about actually releasing your faith for it. Uh, you can go over the, the lessons I've talked to all last week on it. But today I'm talking about actually releasing your faith for it. Praise God. God bless you, James. I see you on, on today. God bless you and your wife. Praise God. So, <clears throat> we're going to look at this. Now, I want you to go with me, first of all, to the book of Genesis, chapter number 26 and verse number 12. You know, uh, there was a famine in the land. And, uh, you know, everybody else was kind of, you know, going with the famine and things like that. You know, what do we do? This is a famine. Maybe, you know, the president can, you know, send a, a check out. Praise God. Maybe the Senate or the the Congress can go ahead and send us a check and things like that. We wait on them. Or you can understand the principle that the Word of God has. Now, I'm not putting none of that down. Thank God for all the help that the government can give and will give. Praise God. But there's something that Isaac did that, that got him out of this famine, in the famine. <laughs> Amen. And that is he released his faith in the, uh, in the hundredfold blessing. And uh, so if you read the, the beginning of the chapter in, in 26, it, it talks about a famine. Then he talks about God comes and says, look, God comes along and encourages him and tells you, I'm with you, even in, in the midst of this. And so when God came to him and encouraged him in his area, just read, just read that Genesis 26, verse 1 through 12, and you'll see God encouraged him. And God didn't know what he's going to do in the, over his life in the midst of all this that was going on. But then in verse, 20, in verse 12, uh, Isaac says this, then Isaac sold in that land and received. In the same year, a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Mm. And the Lord blessed him. Then in verse 13, it says, And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. The Living Bible says he, the, the man became richer and richer by the day until he was very wealthy. And that's all in one year. That's all in one year. So uh, that's why it's so important to get a hold of this. This is biblical principles. And, and I think I did a good job by the Holy Spirit last week to show that it's throughout the scriptures. And we're going to kind of do a review on that today. Just really get this in your spirit. I'm going to tell you, God bless you, daughter. I see you. God bless you. <laughs> and praise God. So look at this now. Then Isaac, after all that that was going on in the land, 
he sowed <clears throat> in that land. See, there's always something you can do in your situation that you have. Remember, I think it was Elijah told the woman, the widow woman, she was talking about all I got enough for me and my son would eat it and die. She said, all I got is this little pot of oil. And he, and he said, this is what you have. If you, if you will sow that, what you do have, God, supernatural things can, can happen in your life. What he was actually saying is the blessing, the power of the blessing can actually come on you. Amen. This other little woman in the Bible, it talks, I think it was Elisha, or when it was Elijah, and, 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 and she, uh, she said her husband had died. She was a widow woman, and, and, and all she had was a pot of oil also. And Elijah the last asked her, what, what do you have? I'll got the pot of oil. He said, now you can sow that. And so he, she sold that and, and invested that into the things of God. And what happened when she did that? Bible said that, that all of a sudden oil started flowing. Oil started flowing. And uh, uh, to the point she had enough to pay all her bills, all her debts off, and had enough to live on children and rest. You, what I'm saying is God can take what you have and, and put the blessing on it. <laughs> put the blessing on the power of the blessing on it. And it'll cause things to multiply in your life this year. And, and he said, this happened in the same year. So I'm declaring that 2022 is the year of the hundredfold blessing on your life, on your children, on your family, on your marriage, on your, in the health of your body, in your, in your spiritual anointing, and also in the area of your finances. I'm declaring the hundredfold blessing on your life. Because it says here that, 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 that he received in the same year a hundredfold, then it said, and the Lord blessed him. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So let me let me give let me give a good definition for you. Let me give a good definition for you. The hundredfold blessing. Number one, the hundredfold blessing is God's creative power, which enables me to prosper and to excel at the highest level in all that I do and in whatever I put my hands to. It is the reason for everything. This blessing that God gave, amen, on your life is what will cause you to excel and prosper at the highest level this coming year, even beginning now in Jesus' name. So point number two I got on here, <clears throat> that the hundredfold blessing is God's favor, his wisdom, his prosperity, his preferential treatment, vindication, and protection over your life. The hundredfold blessing I have on there is God breathing in your direction. God breathed in Isaac's direction. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Isn't that a blessing? Praise God. And then I put on number three is the hundredfold is the exchange of your seed sown. What would have happened if Isaac had not have sown that seed? He never would have experienced the hundredfold blessing. Are you following that year? He probably would have went through the same thing everybody's went through. He probably would have been waiting on the president or the, the governor or the senator or the mayor or Congress or, or the Senate to quit fighting. He'd been waiting on all that. But here he decided to do something with what he had. And the blessing of God came on that. And it called the hundredfold blessing, caused him to receive the hundredfold blessing that same year. That's why I've been speaking on this so much. I know sometimes people don't really get they want something real fast or something like this, but I'm just trying to get you the very, very down to down to earth facts that God wants you this year to experience the hundredfold blessing. And I understand this because I've been doing this for, for a lot of years. Everybody's not is not ready or do they want to go at this level, the highest level. But I believe that God will put people like you across my path and put me across your path because you've been chosen by God to experience the hundredfold blessing in your life. You've been chosen by God to experience the highest level of prosperity, the highest level of health, amen, in your life. And I believe that's why God has put us together. See, notice here, that there's, a, there's a scripture here talking about the hundredfold blessing, but it comes from your seed song. It comes from song what you had. Isaac had a seed. He put that into the ground, and that year got a hundredfold. Mark chapter number four, verse 20 says this, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as what? Hear the word, receive it. See, people can hear the word, but you've got to receive this. That's the thing. You've got to receive this. And then it said, if you hear the word, concern the hundredfold, and you receive that word, concern the whole fund of blessing, it will bring forth fruit. Some 30, some 60, and some a hundredfold. 
Why not go for the hundredfold? Amen. Now, let's get to this point. Why then should we receive the hundredfold blessing? These are some points. What are the benefits then of receiving this hundredfold blessing? Number one, oh God, I don't know if you can handle this or not. The hundredfold blessing will make you rich. Glory to God. Again, I know everybody's not ready for this. Everybody don't want this. But this is for those that have an ear to hear this, okay? The hundredfold blessing will make you rich. Proverbs 10, 22 says this. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. That word sorrow means toil. It means you ain't got to work three, to three jobs to get it done. Amen. It will make you rich. Uh, we can see here that this blessing, remember God told Abraham, come around your family. Oh my God, sometimes you got to do that sometimes. He said, I'm going to take you to a place. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a blessing. And notice this blessing made Abraham rich. Uh, Genesis chapter number 13 and verse number 2, it says this. And Abraham was what? Very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. So we can see this blessing that was on Abraham made him rich. Amen. Because God told him, I'm going to bless you. This blessing will come on your life. And it's going to make you be a blessing. And this blessing made him rich. Notice in the book of Psalms, David, David understood this also in the book of Psalms. David started, David started with just a little shepherd boy. But look what David says when the blessing of God is on your life. In Psalms 112 verse 1, David says this, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. Verse 2, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. And what happens when the blessing is on your house? Verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness remaineth forever. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. When the blessing is on your life, wealth and riches will be in your house. So that means you can have the kind of house that you really want, at the level you want, your dream house, when the blessing is on your life. And that's what I'm talking about today, about releasing this hundredfold blessing on your life. You got you to gotta receive the word on it. You got you, you to gotta hear the word on it. You got to receive the word on it. Then you got to act upon this. This is so important this year. Now, point number two is this. Now, I understand this because before I understood this principle, like I said, my, you know, our church, uh, this, I started passing back in 1976. But from 1976 to 1990, we struggled, amen, in ministry because I didn't understand the blessing. We talk about being blessed. We always used to, if somebody sneezed, we talk about God bless you, <laughs> amen. But nobody talk about this in the full blessing, so we struggled. But when I went to uh, went to ministry school there in Tulsa, Oklahoma, on the, on the, uh, Kennedy Hagen, went went to two more years of on the Apostle Frederick Casey Price, and and I saw the I heard about the blessing, I saw the blessing in manifestation, I understood that it was true. After that, things start happening in my life, amen. In, in our ministry, in my family, in my finances. And that's why I'm not telling you what I believe. I'm telling you what I know. Amen. And sometimes we got to go back and rehear this over again. Because we, our spirit needs to be refreshed in this hundredfold blessing on our lives. Notice this then. The hundredfold blessing will also stop the destroyer. When the blessing is on your life, it will stop the devil from destroying things in your house, in your ministry, in your business. Malachi 3.10 God understood this principle, and, and, and that's why we, he, he really wanted the people to continue to, to tithe. Not because God didn't need the money, but he understood how to connect them to the blessing. And so he says this, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. This is Malachi 3.10. There will be meat in my house. And then he says, prove me now, here with the Lord of hosts, if I will not pour you out what? A blessing, that blessing on your life. That there shall not be room enough to receive it all. Because when this blessing comes on your life, it pulls you into the highest level possible of prosperity and blessing and increase on you, your family, your business, your ministry, whatever it else is. He said, open the windows of heaven. I'll pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room to receive it all. Then it says in verse number 11, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. This blessing will knock the devourer out. <laughs> Glory to God. That's what that blessing did. And that blessing knocked that devourer off of Isaac's land. When he, sold that, when he sold that seed, it knocked that blessing off of his land, and his land produced a hundredfold that year. Everybody else dealt with poverty. 
Everybody else is dealing with famine. But Isaac, in the same midst of that, because he sowed that seed in famine, his land produced a hundredfold. Why? Because the Bible says the Lord blessed him. The blessing was on his land. And here it God says, I will rebuke and devour for your sakes. Verse 11. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast the fruit for the time of the Lord, says the Lord of hosts. But he said, when his blessing is on your life, the destroyer cannot destroy the fruits of your ground anymore. Your business, your ministry, your family. Amen. Praise God. So point number three is this. Point number three. The hundredfold blessing has removed the curse off of your life. Because that curse was there. Remember God said, that when he told Adam and Eve, he said, the, the ground is cursed for your sake. But his hundredfold blessing will remove that curse. Uh, notice what Jesus Christ did in, in Galatians chapter number 3 and verse 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Glory to God of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, curses it everyone that hangeth upon a tree. Why? That the blessing, that the blessing of Abraham not come on the Gentiles through faith. So God, even Jesus Christ became a curse so that that blessing come on your life. See, so the blessing is here. The blessing is not coming. The blessing is here. But we activate it with our seed. Just like Isaac activated the blessing with his seed. The tithing activates the blessing. And so he says here that the blessing of Abraham is on you right now. It's not coming. It's here. Oh, it is God. And this year, that hundredfold blessing can manifest in your life spiritually, physically, financially, as you release your faith in it. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's why you got to hear this, understand this, and then apply it in your life, and see the results in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Notice what he says here. Every one of us are heirs to it. Verse 29, he says, And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. That the same blessing of Abraham, that's the other Abraham, becoming very rich is on you. And you are heirs according to the promise. I mean, everything that God did through for Abraham, and he promised to go through Abraham to his seed, is on your life right now, today in Jesus' name. Praise God. Now, as we see this, point number four is this. The hundredfold blessing will cause your house, your church, and your business to look like the Garden of Eden. Glory to God. Can you see that today? Praise God. Notice the book of Isaiah, chapter number 51. And verse number three, it says this, For the Lord shall comfort Zion. Zion represents the church. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert places like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. That's the desire of the blessed, why God put the blessing on us. That God created the blessing. He created the Garden of Eden, but he put the blessing on us so that you and I can continue to expand this garden. Amen. Praise God. And that's why God says that, that, that he put this blessing on our lives so that your house, people say, I wonder how the Garden of Eden would have looked. Look at your house. Look at your ministry. Are you following me? That's how God wants to put the blessing in your life. That's why the Queen of Sheba came to see Solomon, because Solomon, the Solomon's whole uh, uh, surrounding had the blessing of the Lord on it. And the Queen of Sheba came and saw, she heard, number one, she heard him, and then she saw the way everything was. You know, his, his house, the way everything was. She, the Bible says she was without, no more spirit was left in her, because she saw Solomon manifesting uh, the Garden of Eden. Glory to God. And that's what God said happen in your life as the blessing comes on your life. So you can't be satisfied with barely getting along. You can't be satisfied with second rate, second class things because the blessing of the Lord is on you. You just got to activate it and know how to hear it. And let me tell you something. Again, can I say this to you? Everybody's not going to go here with you. There will be some people that's not going to be willing to make the sacrifice necessary to get there. So you got to know that ahead of time. You got to make a decision that this is for you. And God will cause it to happen for you. He that seeketh will find. He that knocketh, the door will be open. He that asks shall receive. Then Jesus says in Luke, I think mean, chapter 11, he said, and everyone that will ask will receive. So you got to recognize that everybody's not going to be asking at the level you're asking. So don't be trying to pull everybody with you. Are you following? Again, those that want to come, welcome them. But, those, but don't try to pull because let me tell you something. 
It's hard to drive a car with somebody with their feet on the brake. You got that. So, so everybody that's with you have to be there ready to go on the trip with you, not with their feet on the brake. Amen? So it's important. Now, point number five. Point number five. The hundredfold blessing causes new members to be attracted to your churches, new clients to be attracted to your business. You don't have to, you don't have to go after them. They come after you. That's on you, Montoya. New people purchasing your books. That's how, whatever business you're in, whatever ministry you're in, whatever there, that's what the hundredfold blessing will cause to happen in Jesus' name. See, notice in the book of Deuteronomy, what the blessings on your life. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse number 2 says this, And all these blessings, and all these blessings shall come on thee, and shall overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Are you hearing his voice today? To receive the hundredfold blessing on your life. To, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you receiving this? That's what's important. He said, if you do, all these blessings are going to come on you. You ain't got to go after them. They're going to come after you. Notice the book of Proverbs, chapter number 13, verse 21, in the Living Bible. It says, curses chase sinners, while blessings chase the righteous. Glory to God. Isn't that beautiful? That's what happens when you walk in this hundredfold blessing. On your life. Point number six. Point number six. The hundredfold blessing causes promotion, divine connections, contracts, the right breaks, the right people to be attracted to you, the right opportunities destined to be yours that have your name on them, bigger than you could ever imagine, to come to you in abundance. Glory to God. Get ready. For new contracts. Get ready for new opportunities. Get ready for everything that has your name on it. Bigger than you ever dreamed of. Remember Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says this. Unto him that is able. To do exceeding abundant and above. All you can ask or think. According to the power. That's working in you. Get ready. But that's the hundredfold blessing. That's on your life. When it works on your life. It, it, go, it, it goes far beyond you've ever dreamed of. I tell you something, when God first spoke to my life, me, uh, back in 1991, that I was, he told me to go back to the state of Arizona. He said, I want you to start a ministry training institute to equip my people as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, ministry of helps. He said, and through them, churches will be established throughout Arizona, United States, and the world. When God first put in my heart, oh my God, my church at that time, we only had about 50 members. We were living five months behind in our rent. <laughs> Pay me, you follow me. And yet God gave me this word in my situation. All I had was those little 50 members, but I, I turned the 50 members into my seed. I started training them. I started developing them. But first of all, I went and got the seed in me first you know, from three years of ministry school. And then I trained them. And, and all of a sudden, opportunities came to me. The opportunity to buy the whole shopping center that we were in at that time. The opportunity to, to take the gospel of Jesus Christ into Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Nigeria. The, 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 the opportunity to, to, to just, you know, uh, go places and be a part of things and be a part of Apostle Price's ministry where I was able to have the, the privilege of serving on his board for about I think four or five years. I, mean, I think it was six years, I think it was. I thought it, it brought new opportunities that my heart never dreamed of. But when that blessed in my life, it brought the right people. Stop being attracted to me, and I stopped being attracted to them. It brought com con supernatural connections to me. I never dreamed that one day, after listening to Apostle Price on television, that he'd one day be riding in my car with me, and he would one day come and minister in my church. But you know what? The blessing on my life caused all that to happen. That's what happens. That's what's happening to you today. As, as you begin to move in this hundredfold blessing, God's got things according to Ephesians three twenty. They're exceeding abundantly and above and all you can ask or think far above what you've ever dreamed of. But it's all waiting on you. The blessing is here. It's not coming. It's here. It's on you right now. This is the year for you to activate that blessing. Point number seven. Point number seven. The hundredfold blessing is for now in this time. But I just told you a few minutes ago. Notice the book of uh, uh, Mark chapter number 10 verse 29. What happened was the disciples was wondering because they had given up everything. 
<laughs> you know what I mean, to follow Jesus. They had been businessmen. They were very wealthy businessmen, but they had given up everything to follow Jesus. So that you, what, what, we, what's, what we're going to get and, and, and what we're going through in our lives, what we, the sacrifice we made to follow you, Jesus. Because sometimes when you first start following Jesus, it looks like an unfair exchange. <laughs> Amen. You know, God asked you to do things. You know what I mean? God, when I was in business, God said, okay, now going to full-time ministry. It looked like an unfair exchange because I thought being, going to ministry was going to be broke. Are you following me? But I was willing to do that. But are you following me? It looked like an unfair exchange. But God did great. Man, God done exceeding abundant above all that I expected. I made that change. What I'm telling you something is this. It looks like sometime when God speaks to you about this hundredfold blessing, and you begin to move in an area in your life, you know, you know, you can't get afraid because everybody's not willing to go with you in those areas. When I first thought, when God spoke in my heart about going to ministry school, I mean, there's people that was with me at some of Dr. Craig, I'm with you. <laughs> Amen. My church in Phoenix, I was with, we was at a small church, about 145, about 100 people, something like that, 80 people, something like that, lives in Phoenix. And when, we, when I left, everyone told me they're going to be with me. The church went down to 15 people. And the church, in, I had another church in, in Coolidge. Arizona, I went about 140 people, and you know, when I left, even people said, we're with you, okay, we're going to carry this thing on, we believe in that vision, it went down to 10 people, are you following me? And, and it was very discouraging, it's very heartbreaking and things like that, but I keep pushing forward, I, I keep pushing forward, and let me tell you something, I didn't want to quit it one time, I told my wife, that's it, I, I can't handle this, me, me going to middle school is costing me, it's costing me so much, you know, financially cost me so much in ministry. But you know what? I kept going. And you got to do the same thing. Because God had a, a, a ministry prepared for me once I followed through with that assignment to go to ministry school that my eyes had not seen, my ears had not heard, had not entered my heart and God had prepared for me. And, and then in this last 30 years, God showed me that it was not an unfair exchange. He has done far over and above whatever you dream does. And that's what God's got for your life. As you follow through in this hundredfold blessing on your life in Jesus' name. So let's look at this point then. Let's look at some points here. How then do you release your faith for this hundredfold blessing? Number one, I went over some of this this past week in our class. Number one, don't try to get something. Learn how to receive. Learn how to receive because it's already there. And it's about this year about receiving the hundredfold blessing. Point number two is know the difference between what your seed is and what your harvest is. You got you got you got to become a soul. A, you got to become you got to become seed sowing conscious. That I understand that this hundredfold blessing comes from seed sown, not seed just thought. In other words, I would do this, you know, uh, but I want to do this, but no. Remember, the hundredfold blessing operates not by having good thoughts. It operates by seed that is sown. You got that? All right, so now it's important. Point number three is this. You must be careful where you sow your seed because, this, because it must be fertile ground if you're going to get this hundredfold blessing. So you can't just put the seed anywhere. I heard people say, well, you know what? I gave my seed. Uh, to some of the people out there on, on, that's, you know, people, people sometimes be on the side of the freeway or side of the road, you know, you know, uh, you know, help me out. I'm broke. I lost my house. I'm starving. Things like that. Well, nothing wrong with giving people like that, but that's how your seed belongs. That's called alms giving. Alms giving when you give to the poor. The Bible says when you give to the poor, that He'll give you back. The Bible says I'll repay you back when you give to the poor. But the seed must be sown in good ground. You got that? Seed is totally different than alms giving. The, the almsgiving is for the poor. God said, I'll, I'll repay you for doing that. But the seed sowing is connected to the 30, the 60, and the hundredfold blessing. You got that? So you got to be careful where you sow your seed. Number four, don't look for how much your harvest is. Look for where your seed is. Where have you been planting your seed? That's important. You can't plant your seed in a church that's not, that's not prospering, that's not going for it, or in a ministry that's not going for it. Are you following me? You got to make sure that, that, that wherever you're planting your seed is, is working for them. <laughs> Amen. If it's not working for them, how does it work for you? So you want to put your seed in something that, that is growing, that is prospering. Amen. Praise God. Like if, you, if you're an investor, you know, in the natural realm, you, you, you don't go to some company that's failing, some company that's on the verge of bankrupt. You go to a company that's where, 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 the, where, where, where it's been going up like this for the last 20 years. It's been going like this. Oh, yeah, I can be a part of that. 
Cause I, I can latch on to that. But if you've been one, if you want, if you got one doing this here, you say I just want to help. I don't put my seed away. Cause I always want to help them out. No, no, no. It's something sometimes they're not doing correctly. The reason why it's going this. You find me? You want to find someone that's got this thing working because you put your seed in good soil that's producing something. You got that? That's important to do that. Now, so point number five is that's where the number five. Put your seed into fertile ground, into fertile ground. Just because it's ground, I know we, I was on a farm and you know, and, and, and there was a big a lot of processes that, that we went through before before they put the seed into the ground. My father was a head farmer. And you know, many times if they saw that it was some ground that was kind of hard, they send these plows to there to break up the follow ground, break up that ground. And many times they were irrigated, you know, make sure the ground was proper, was proper about, about ahead of time, and then they put the seed into the ground. You don't just throw your seed into any ground. Make sure it's fertile. And sometimes there was ground, there was certain parts of the land they would call, they, they, they wouldn't even plant them that year. They, they let it rest for a year. So you got to make sure your ground is fertile. That's important. Okay, point number six is this. Look at the seed and the soil, not the harvest. Okay, that, that's that one. That, that, uh, this one, that's the part I have in there. So the seed and the soil will work together. Seed and soil working together will produce the harvest. So your seed and the soil will produce the harvest. Jesus said this. He said, the, the, when you put the seed into the ground, you can sleep and rise, then not, and seed will come up and not know how. So the seed and the soil will go to work once you put it in for the ground. The seed and the soil will go to work once you put it into soil ground. It'll work of its own accord. That's why the Bible said when, when, when I did plant that seed, it said this, that in the same year, he received a hundredfold because he put it into fertile ground. The seed and the soil working together will produce a hundredfold in your life. Point number eight, point number eight is this, don't go to the heathen world. Many times the Christians are trying to go to the world. Well, I think I'm just going to go down here to the, to the casino. <laughs> and I'm going to try, and I'm, I'm gonna believe God for good luck. No. He, I, I ain't putting you that. Do what you want to do. But I'm saying, don't think that, 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 the, that the heathen world is designed to give you the hundredfold. The hundredfold is going to come through your seed sown into fertile ground for the, into the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, point number seven is understand the value of what you have. You may not have a lot. The Wonder Woman, uh, when Elijah went to her, she didn't have much. All she had was enough for her and her son, but either didn't die. But she didn't recognize the value of what she had. What she thought was, an, was not enough. Elijah told her, what you have was enough. To turn your life, but you got to turn what you have into a seed, and then put that seed into my life. You know, you know. He said, "But you know, give to me first. Turn what you have into a seed, sown into the ministry, and then it'll cause the oath, the blessing to come on what you on that thing." And the Bible said, when she did that and obeyed the prophet, of, the prophet of God, it said, "A meal barrel wasted not." The same thing with the widow woman. Uh, uh, whose husband had died. And she went to Elijah, Elisha, and Elisha told her, what do you have in your house? What do you have? Because what you have has value. All that, this little pot of oil over here. Well, if that's all you have, turn that into a seed. Are you following? He turned it into a seed. He said, shut the door. Don't let everybody go in that way. Everybody can handle the supernatural that's happening in your life right now. Shut the door on you and your sons and watch and see the blessing take over that thing. It's going to work. It's going to happen supernaturally in Jesus' name. That's what the Spirit of God is saying in your life. So let's, let's understand the value of what you have right now. You have What you have right now is enough to prove to God that you'll be faithful with more. Verse number 8. Verse number 8. Give God empty vessels so he can fill them. He not, he not only will fill them, he'll cause them overflow. Empty out flesh. Empty out the way you thought you were going to do it. You know what I mean? Give God some vessels. Give God something to work with. What you have is enough to start right now releasing your faith in the hundredfold blessing with the seed that you have right now. With your tithe, your offering, your special seed. Get it into the ministry. Get it into Jesus' hands and let Jesus begin to multiply that. He'll do the same thing in your hands today that he did in the hands of the disciples when he was here on the earth. He blessed it, gave it to the disciples, gave it to the people. 
God will still get the blessing to you to be a blessing to people. Hallelujah. Now, point number nine, don't try it, do it. Don't try it, do it. Because trying does get that done. You got, you got to be in this thing because you believe it. You can't just do it, well, I'm going to try to see if it works. Dr. Craig said, no, no, no. Come, come hell or high water. You got to be committed to this type of lifestyle, this hundredfold lifestyle. Amen. Point number 10. Never associate. Never associate with a wicked person, even for the attainment of what you want. Wicked people, that's why we call them wicked people. They, they have no morals. They have no integrity. They'll get you on the wrong track. And then, and then laugh at you for doing it. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So don't get, don't get in the covenant with wicked people. Amen. Well, this person is like a nice person. No, uh -uh, no, no. Don't get in the covenant with wicked people. Even if it's taking you. Well, but God going God to use them to be a blessing me. Well, they can do it without you getting in the covenant with them. You, you, you got to trust God. And believe God is going to call the right people to come to your life. Now, uh, amen. And wicked people will give to you. But don't get into business with wicked people. Amen. Especially because a lot of churches getting, you know, well, well we're going to go down here and, and maybe we're going to go down here and uh, hopefully, you know, the police course are going to help us out because we need their help. No. You begin to trust God. Amen. Praise God. Trust God. Amen. And, and watch and see how this hundredfold blessing will work in your life. He's going to he gonna get it through people. He may get it through some wicked people. Because Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. But don't get in company with them. Very important to understand that. Now, point number 11, do not put an option for failure in your life because the devil will give you all the evidence you ought to quit. This is not working, Dr. Craig. This is not working, y'all. I tried what Dr. Craig said. It ain't working. Well, don't try what Dr. Craig said. Try what you believe the word of God is saying. That this the seed time and harvest, the Bible says, shall not cease. Shall not cease. Amen. So you believe that. Now what Dr. Craig is saying today, I see it in the word of God. I'm trusting the Lord and I'm moving into the hundredfold lifestyle this year in Jesus' name. Praise God. Can you see that today? Now, uh, point number 12. Do not waste spiritual energy. The harvest is too great uh, to allow doubt of others to affect you. So don't be wasting spiritual energy on people that don't want to go here. You waste a lot of spiritual energy. I make a mistake a lot of times trying to help people that didn't want to go. So, so people that are doubting this, so you go ahead and doubt it. You don't want to move in this area. I'm going on right now myself. I'm going to move into the hundredfold this year in my life. Verse number 13, uh, don't let people make you their source. There are going to be people that when the blessing come in your life, because it is, when they're being in manifest in your life, because it will, they're going to try to make you their source. Well, well, well you know, can, can I borrow this? Can I borrow that? You know, and, and, and if the Lord leads you to give us money, nothing wrong with that. But don't let people become, let you be their soul because they'll try to make you their source. Well, you know what? When, when, uh, when, uh, when, when I had some money back tears ago, I'll give you $5. No, no, no. People will try to make you their source. They'll try to come to you. And no, if the Lord leads you to do some things, fine. But don't let people make you their soul because they'll try to make you their source. Come to you and like that. When they, if, but if you teach them, you let, you let them trust God. And teach them what you know and how you got there is better than you letting them make you their source. Amen. Now, verse 14. Get ready to go to work. It's harvest time. This year is harvest time. This year is going to be the greatest year of your life. Get ready to pull in the harvest. Now, that means you have to go to work. You got to find what God has you to do this year. You got to go to work to see that it's, it makes sure it's happening in Jesus' name. Again, let me my final scripture, but some offering scripture today. And that's in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. It says this in the Amplified Bible. I mean, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8 in the Amplified Bible says this. And God is able. Recognize whatever you go through this year. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Hallelujah. So that you may always... Under all circumstances, whatever the need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, but be furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Get ready for that scripture to manifest in your life this year through the hundredfold blessing. You receive that this year? That's why I'm going to tell you. God bless you, I'm going to tell you. That's why you receive that. 
Because beginning this Tuesday, if you're listening to me, if you've not already signed up for this refresher course, you know, I'm, 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 this is one class I'm teaching this, I'm going to teach this one class for the next few weeks. I'm going to another class. This is going to be a total refreshing of the things that I've learned over the last 20 years. And it's not going to be on regular, it's not going to be on regular Facebook because I, I want it to be designed only for people that really want this. Are you following me? So if you've not already signed up for it, again, message me so I can create, I'm interested in, in being a part of this. Because I'm going to be sending the first classes out this coming Tuesday. And we're going to get started on this thing. And because my goal is to pour everything that God has put into me, into your life. So you can also experience the hundredfold blessing in your life. So God bless you. Before we dismiss it again, we always receive our tithes and offerings for you that are with us. And you're my partners, praise God. We always receive the tithes and offerings. So uh, look there, the tithing is 10% of what God has blessed you with. Then you can also give through Zelle. There, the, you, know, uh, you can give through Zelle. That's a very really easy way of doing it. Um, ministry Cash App is there on your notes or, you, or, or, or on Facebook. You look, if you got my notes, you got my notes. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, you scroll down, you see it on there. But I, I'm going to pray for you and believe God with you that, 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 that you receive the hundredfold blessing on your life this year, both through your time, the offering, through your seed, and you're going to begin to experience all that God has for you in Jesus' name. So let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive new partners into this ministry, those that you, you've connected me to and those that you have connected to me. And I ask you, Father, Lord, to open their eyes to see the things that you have me to share this year concerning this, the full life that you, that you called them to live in. And Lord, I receive their tithe on your behalf. I receive their offering. I receive their seeds. And I set myself in agreement with them, Father, that they receive the hundredfold blessing on their life this year, spiritually, physically, and financially. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, it's been a great time being with you today. Praise God. I'm looking forward to being with you again uh, next week. But remember, we're going to start these new classes. This, I'm calling it the MTI Refresher. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. It's going to be a great blessing for you. So, uh, if, uh, uh, until then, this is Apostle Alvin Craig and my wife. She's not here with me today, but and my wife, Dr. Brother Craig. Until then, it's us saying, may God's riches and his very best be yours. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.